All right, hey, how's it going, everybody? My name's uh, Larry Fitch. Lawrence is my proper name, so you can call me either one. Larry is what I usually go by. I'm from San Carlos Park Fire uh, District, so thank you for hosting us. This one's gonna be a fun little little uh, presentation. I'm a huge Baltimore Ravens fan. My family's from Baltimore. I was actually one of the only ones born down here, so when I was told I can do my presentation on whatever I want, of course, the Baltimore Ravens is what I decided to do it on. So there's a brief little history of the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, just so you know, there are exits on each side, exit out front, bathrooms over to our left over here, plenty of refreshments. So if you guys, uh, if I bore you at all, feel free to get up, get some coffee, or if, uh, God forbid, there's a fire, we have some exits to get out of here. Hopefully we don't have to worry about that. All right, let's get in. So to learn about the Baltimore Ravens, you kind of got to start before the Baltimore Ravens. Before them, they were actually the Baltimore Colts. So people that aren't Ravens fans or aren't Baltimore people might not know this. Started off with the Baltimore Colts from 1953 to 1983. They were named, I learned this myself actually, start researching for this, they're named after the Preakness Stakes. So you, in the Triple Crown you have the Kentucky Derby, Belmont Stakes, and the Preakness Stakes, and they decided since the Preakness is right there outside of Baltimore, let's name our team the Colts, because you're horse racing stuff. Probably the most notable player is Johnny Unitas. Johnny Unitas, to this day, they still have a statue of him outside of the Baltimore Ravens Stadium, M&T Bank Stadium. When you go in to go to a Ravens game, you go ahead and rub Johnny Unitas' foot for good luck. It's bad luck if other team's uh, fans rub his foot. So for those that are Browns, Steelers fans, things like that, uh, please do not rub his toe. It will really make everybody pretty upset. Uh, so they won three NFL championships before the NFL and AFL merger, and then after the merger, they won one Super Bowl. The last owner was uh, Robert Ursay. The last owner of the Baltimore, or the Baltimore Colts was Robert Ursay. Robert Ursay was a drunk. People hated him. He was a bit of a, a prick, to use a bad word. Um, and he told the Baltimore people that he would never leave Baltimore, that uh, he was going to stay there. And lo and behold, he decided to move them in the middle of the night. Uh, 1984 in March, after telling the Baltimore people that he's not going to move the team, he decided to go ahead and get Mayflower trucks and move the team in the middle of the night in a snowstorm. Uh, it was big news for Baltimore. Everybody was very, very upset. It was, it was kind of a, a little bit of a surprise. A lot of people kind of had the writing on the wall that he was actually going to move the team. But luckily for us, unlucky for Cleveland fans, Mr. Art Modell decided to move his team, the Cleveland Browns, to Baltimore. And uh, when they did, in the middle of the night, well, so yeah. <laughs> so from the Ravens side of it, the story goes that uh, he wanted to originally stay in Cleveland, but uh, the city of Cleveland wasn't really doing what he was wanting. Whatever happened, he eventually decided to move him to the city of Baltimore for us. Uh, 1996 is when we got the uh, Baltimore Ravens. They did a fan contest to choose the name. So before the internet was too big or anything like that, I can't remember if they phoned it in or if they sent in uh, letters uh, to uh, the, the Ravens or the Baltimore staff. But they did a contest to choose the name. They had five names picked out. The Americans, the Marauders, the Mustangs, and the Railers. Uh, the last name that they ended up going with, obviously, was the Ravens. People that don't know where the Raven's name came from. Edgar Allan Poe, the, the poem, The Raven, probably the most famous poem that he had. Edgar Allan Poe died and is buried in Baltimore City. His last known whereabouts was actually a bar called um, The Horse You Came In On. And that bar is still open and running. You can go there. I, I like it a lot. It's a very nice bar. Uh, so anyways, that's where they got the idea for The Raven. And it seemed like the entire city liked that name. So that's what they ended up deciding to go with. Since they moved the Browns from Cleveland to Baltimore, they retained most of the staff, most of the players. So it wasn't like it was like a brand new team popping up or anything like that. Uh, they had a team put together and there, it was a really easy transition for them. Other than the people that were let go or traded and things like that. That first year, they received the fourth and the 26 picks in the first round of the draft. And they got double aces with it. Two Hall of Famers were their two, two first picks as teams in Baltimore. 
people that aren't from Baltimore are not Ravens fans or not huge Baltimore or football fans. Jonathan Ogden might not be a, a household name. Amazing uh, left tackle, obviously, which is why he ended up getting to go into the Hall of Fame. Ray Lewis, if you're a football fan at all, you've probably heard of Ray Lewis. He's, he's a big name guy. One of the best, if not the best, middle linebackers uh, ever to play the sport. Um, and we were very fortunate to have him from the very beginning of our, of our team. So pretty nice, your first two picks, Hall of Fame guys. The early years were a little bit of a rough start. The first year, they only went 4-12. and 12. We started off with Vinny Tessaverdi, came from Cleveland with the team. Uh, good quarterback, just had issues as far as injuries, things like that, and uh, took a little bit to get over the hump. We had a couple of uh, starting quarterbacks throughout, but some notable ones was Jim Harbaugh, who's now really known as, as a uh, head coach. So he's a little bit better of a head coach than he was a football player, but uh, still a great quarterback as well for in his own right, but just didn't translate to the NFL as well. Pretty interesting that Jim Harbaugh was one of our quarterbacks. Now John Harbaugh, his brother, is our head coach, and they actually face each other in the Super Bowl. Tony Banks, again, another decent quarterback, just couldn't push it to the next level kind of deal. Um, in the first four years, our best record was 8-8, eight and eight, so it tells you they weren't really, really cooking with gas just yet. First four years, three different starting quarterbacks, a couple guys in between that, were, uh, that would start throughout the season and things like that. Tony Banks, though, our Super Bowl year, uh, started for the team. Did good, did okay, but he started kind of slumping towards mid through the year, and they replaced him. And the, that was probably the best decision they made because then we won the Super Bowl. Uh, there's supposed to be a little audio, but I couldn't figure out how to get it started. But it was saying We Are the Champion song from, the, from Queen. There's Ray Lewis right there holding the, the, the newspaper ad for it and obviously the Vince Lombardi trophy. Let's see how we can click. There we go. All right, Super Bowl champions in 2000-2001 uh, season. Ravens beat the Giants 34-7. It was an amazing game. Anybody that watched it, or if you go back and watch it now, it's still one of the most defensive dominating games uh, for Super Bowls that, that I, at least I know of. Head coach was Brian Billick. MVP was Ray Lewis, one of the few not to be a quarterback to win a, uh, um, an MV, a Super Bowl MVP. Trent Dilfer is the one who took over for Tony Banks. And uh, he doesn't get a lot of praise, but uh, he's the quarterback that helps us win that Super Bowl. Um, Rookie for uh, the, that year, the rookie fifth round, or rookie fifth overall pick, Jamal Lewis ran for 102 yards and a touchdown. Great job for one a rookie running back, another great, great, great uh, uh, Baltimore Raven. Super cool thing about that game was we got touchdowns on offense, defense, and on special teams. Doesn't really happen very, very often uh, in the Super Bowl era. After that, we kind of took a little bit of a downslope, had a couple different quarterbacks. Some notable ones was Kyle Bowler. Kyle Bowler, great in uh, college, just didn't translate too well into the NFL, had a, some uh, injury issues, things like that. Steve McNair, amazing quarterback. We traded for him, and uh, his first year with us took us to the playoffs, but then the second year, not so much, and then he ended up, I believe he retired after that. Um, so it's a little bit of a down years. This is about the time when I was younger that I started becoming more of a Ravens fan after the Super Bowl and then during these down times. So it was a little bit hard being a Ravens fan for a little bit there. But then we went, went into the Joe Flacco era and this is where it really took off for us. Uh, Joe Flacco, whether you love him or hate him or you think he's elite or you think he's not elite, he actually helped out the Ravens a lot. The Ravens during this time period had an amazing defense. So the defense kind of carried the team, but Joe Flacco was no slouch either. Drafted in 2008, first round, 18th pick. We trade it back, then trade it forward again to get him. Uh, he made the playoffs the first four years, uh, and it was always just inches away. Um, missing a, somebody drop a pass or somebody miss a field goal. Billy Cundiff missing the field goal uh, in 2011 was a heartbreaker for everybody because that would have took us to the Super Bowl. But on his fifth year, boom, Super Bowl again. How great is that? Joe Flacco, MVP of the Super Bowl. He made it there. Finally, we, we, we lost uh, Billy Cundiff, brought in Justin Tucker. Justin Tucker made the kicks that counted and got us into that Super Bowl. That year, when we got into the Super Bowl, Every playoff game, the Ravens were supposed to be counted out. It was supposed to be Ray Lewis's last year. So they kept thinking, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And they found a way to win each game. 
Joe Flacco made some amazing passes in the playoffs to make it to the Super Bowl for him and then just did an amazing job in the Super Bowl. This is a pretty notable Super Bowl, even if you're not a Ravens fan or if you're not a 49ers fan, because this is the one I was talking about earlier. Jim Harbaugh was the head coach of the 49ers. John Harbaugh being the head coach of the Ravens. First Super Bowl where two, two um, uh, brothers were facing each other as head coaches. Joe Flacco, like I mentioned earlier, made it to, became the MVP of the Super Bowl. Uh, Ray Lewis, like I said, that was his last ride, so he ended on top, which was really, really great for him. Whether you're a Ravens fan or not, it's kind of neat seeing a guy who's a Hall of Fame athlete and one of the best ever to do the position to be able to end on top like that. Oh, another cool little stat was uh, Jacoby Jones, right after the halftime was over, kickoff to the Ravens, ran 108 yards, returned a touchdown. That was a, 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 a record-breaking uh, uh, kickoff return. Uh, so yeah, one beat the 49ers 34-31. Oh, that was also the one that the, uh, the lights went out in the stadium. So it was kind of really eerie that all of a sudden the lights go out, 49ers start making a comeback. There's some thoughts of there's some tomfoolery going on there, but uh, nothing was proven. <laughs> now, wrapping it up, we're looking at towards the future. The Ravens ended up drafting a uh, Lamar Jackson here in the 2018 draft. Uh, first round, number 32 pick. They trade it back into the first round in order to pick him up. At this point, we had Joe Flacco, but it was kind of going up and down of how he was doing. And uh, the Ravens organization decided it was time to make a move. The amazing talent was on the board, and they decided to trade up and get him. So far, he's been doing pretty good. Made it to the playoffs five times out of six years. He was two times league MVP, three times in a Pro Bowl, and he signed a $260 million contract to stay with the Ravens. Hopefully, that means this year we might have a Super Bowl coming up or sometime in the future, he'll be uh, short, near future, he'll become, uh, become a Super Bowl MVP as well. That does it. That's kind of a quick rundown of the Ravens. Uh, you know, there's obviously a lot more history to them, a lot more information, but that kind of gives you some of the, the, the high points of it. Other than that, any questions? You guys interested in becoming Ravens fans now? Browns fan? Go ahead. That that was just all hearsay. That's Tom Fleury. I, I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, so there was there was some allegations that, that, that Ray Lewis was either involved in a murder or he himself con uh, uh, committed the murder. As far as I know, he didn't do it, but uh, you know, there's, there's, depends on who you're asking kind of deal. But yeah, hopefully he's turned his life around now and he seems to be a very upstanding citizen, so go ahead. Are you aware of the conspiracy theory that Ray Lewis killed Steve McNair? Oh, I have not heard that one. No, not at all. So, no. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, that's, that's completely new. I, don't, I think I would have heard of that one before. Um, but yeah, by, my, by all understandings that I know of, at least, uh, Ray Lewis is upstanding citizen. He seems to be a motivator to a lot of people and stuff like that. So, but anybody else? Any more questions in the back? All right, guys, I hope you learned a little something. Maybe you're Ravens fans now, too.